start the course, I would like to provide you some uh, concepts that I think it's necessary for you to un better understand what we are go going to do when evaluating um, user experience. Why do we need to evaluate? We need to evaluate to get informed about the value of your product getting feedback about your design issues or to better understand the user's experience, letting them to reflect on their needs and the experience will enable us to better understand what we need to design to satisfy a good, uh, to provide a good experience for the users. If you have a look to this schema, you will see that evaluation is an ongoing process, is something that it needs to be iterative. It means that you need to evaluate in different phases. In the conceptual phase, in the low fidelity prototype phase, and in the high fidelity prototype phase. So evaluation is present everywhere. When? When do we need to evaluate? As I said before, evaluation is, needs to be done in different design phases or development phases. During the scenarios, when you are doing your sketches or you are working on your concepts, du during early prototypes, low fidelity prototypes like paper prototypes, during high fidelity prototypes or functional prototypes, and, and even when you have a product in the, on the market. Where shall we evaluate? How the evaluation process can be done in, the, in many places. It can be done in the field, outside. They are called field studies. It can be done in the constraint conditions, lab studies, or online studies, or it can be made by through questionnaires and scales. Who to use? During the evaluation process, we can use either experts, UX experts, we can use one user at a time, a group of users, or even a pair of users. What to evaluate? The evaluation study period can be done in different times. Before usage, so you get to know better the user before they experience your product. During a snapshot uh, in an interaction, while they are using your product for the first time, for the sex, second time, and so on. During a specific time experience, you provide them a, an activity and then they, they will face that experience. Or, a, or during a long term usage, like one week, six months, one year, and so on. What objects do you, we evaluate usually? We evaluate different things. Uh, all interactive objects need to be evaluated. So interactions need to be set up and evaluated. We can evaluate an interface uh, on a screen, like a platform, a browser, a mobile interface. Or we can evaluate a spe a special interactive uh, objects. We can go deep and evaluate specific things within our product like visual, audible, tangible and so on. Evaluation. So let's take a look at uh, some concepts of evaluation and let's try to understand those concepts. Usually we, uh, we hear about concepts like usefulness, usability and user experience. Uh, we also uh, hear about evaluation methods and, and tools. So basically objects of evaluation methods, category, metrics, data and skills. But do we know exactly what that means or do we understand what we are talking about? So let's let's uh, go deep into the concepts. Let's start with the usefulness, usability and user experience. What they mean. So in terms of user experience, a good user experience depends on both pragmatic and hedonic qualities. What is it pragmatic and hedonic qualities? Let's see. 
if you look at usability, we, we see usability more uh, gasping the pragmatic qualities of use, user experience. And in terms of user experience, then we see that user experience focus more on the ergonomic qualities of your product. But we don't, uh, if we don't understand what this means, then it's very hard for us to start evaluating and understand how to set up the protocols and get feedback from the users. What it means? So, usefulness and usability are mostly pragmatic qualities. This means that we focus on to-do goals, we focus on the product, we focus on our system and we try to find out what does work, what doesn't work, what are the errors um, and we look for specific things to fix. The uh, hedonic qualities, we focus on a specific thing related with emotions. We look for pleasure and for experience. And we don't focus so much on the product, but we focus more on the user and his experience when using the product, uh, the system, for example. So, pleasure is related with the tonic. It's related with the two big goals, more with the user, the experience that we want to focus, the values that we want to transmit to the user. Usability concept uh, it means that it is the extent to which a product or a service can be used by specific users to achieve predefined goals in a specific context. What does this mean? Really, usability means that we focus on assessing and evaluating a specific product and a service and we focus on three main dimensions. If the product is effective, efficient and satisfactory. Sometimes we also consider two other dimensions like, like learnability and memorability. Again, we can go a little bit further and try to measure its usefulness or the degree to which a product enables users to achieve his or her goals. Assessing, for example, users' willingness to use a product or a service. But, nonetheless, the term user experience came out um, a few years ago and this term tends to be distinguished or tends to be misinterpreted with usability. They are two different terms from my perspective. So usability focus on, on measuring pragmatic things. It, it focuses on measuring um, effectiveness, efficiency and satisfaction. And user experience focuses more on the emotion, the hedonic, hedonic qualities. What happens is that pragmatic uh, qualities are very easy or more easy to measure because they, they can be quantified. Hedonic qualities are not so easy to measure because they are related with emotions and emotions differ from the user to user and also are not so tangible as a pragmatic qualities. What, um, why did this user experience need uh, emerge? Uh, in the beginnings, uh, if we had a product in the market that we consider to be effective, efficient and satisfactory, that means that the product uh, well, the probability of this product to be accepted was high. Nonetheless, with the growth of the market and the number of products and services existing, uh, these three quali qualities are not enough anymore because we have the same similar products with uh, the similar qualities. So what differentiates this product is the experience that the user has with the product. That's why we call it user experience. We need to measure more than just usability. We need to measure what is the emotion and what we want to 
transfer to the user by using our product. So the user experience basically is the person perception and response of use or anticipated use also of a certain product or a service. We don't focus on the pro product per se, on the mistakes that uh, we can fix, but we focus on how people perceive and respond to the use of, of that product. So how do we evaluate or assess this experience through emotions, through beliefs, to preferences, to perceptions. We mainly focus on behaviors and try to figure out what our product provides and what type of behaviors they provide to users. So, user perception mainly is the degree to which a user perceives a product or a service as providing a good experience. How do we evaluate that? We evaluate the user intentions to use certain product and service. If we look at the schema in terms of where usability stays and where UX uh, stays, we can more or less uh, set up that usability concerns with the product attributes and preventing errors. So usability focuses on the task oriented, how to prevent something for not working or to working in a more efficient or satisfactory way. User experience is something that you measure after using or before using, but mainly after using. So you concern in building positive uh, experience resulted from the interaction with the product. You concern more on reflection and you use methods that can provide that feedback for you. How to choose then a specific method? As you, measuring emotions is a, such a complex uh, way to do. So, um, evaluating user experience can be tricky, but it is possible. As we will now address possible approaches. So, in relating to methods and tools on how to evaluate user experience, this is very similar with the research process. It needs to be carefully planned. Usually, we categorize this in methods. So, in terms of assessment, we have different methods and ways to assess um, our study conditions. We can have methods that uh, are formative, just to get informed, are more summative, uh, based on um, errors. We can uh, design a study, we can design an experiment, and we can use comparative studies to assess and evaluate and get feedback from the users regarding our services. We can also have uh, and apply our uh, evaluation process in different time factors before using snapshot, of interaction. I already addressed this uh, before. And we can also have different ways of measuring or uh, different ways of reporting our feedback. So we can have diaries like self-report diaries. We can observe what the user is doing or we can directly measure like time tasks or number of clicks. We can also calculate and conclude the big five personality, personality traits and we can have also experts opinion. Each method have different data that we can get and we can get that data with different scales. Mainly the, the scales can be more quantified or more qualified. So like metrics uh, of time to complete tasks are more quantified or count of errors. Right, writ written reports are more qualified and schemas, audio records, video records, and so on. Other conditions that we need also to address. We need to 
provides and set up the conditions of use, the surrounding environments. We want to constrain our study or not. We want to do it in the field or we want to do it in the lab conditions where we can prevent any uh, additional um, things that come outside to, to be formed. We should not have also uh, factors like prejudice or previous experience from the user. We should choose the, the user carefully. Mainly, uh, if it is an IT-based user, we, we advise not to use that, that type of users. The best users are the more naive, the ones that do the questions that everyone does. We also need to fi figure out what type of demographic background will use our, uh, our uh, product. Mostly of those answers are um, set up when you do your profile or your, your persona and when you do your scenario. So when setting up your persona and that scenario, you are already selecting the users and uh, where you want to do and perform your, your evaluation.